All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, we will be starting here in just a moment. We're waiting for a few more attendees uh, to come on in. I know it's, for some people it's around their lunchtime, so uh, hopefully they're, they're grabbing a quick snack and we'll make their way over here and then we'll get started. All right. Start at one oh three Central Time. All right. Well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today as we dive into the process of crafting a customer portal using the Kinetic platform. Uh, we'll be talking to key members of the team who were involved in building our own portal. Uh, this discussion will focus on user-centered design, iteration, and maintaining brand consistency while making technical decisions. By the end of the session, we hope you leave with practical insights into approaching projects with the end user in mind, iterating towards excellence, and navigating the Kinetic platform, regardless of technical expertise. First, uh, there are a few housekeeping items I would like to cover with you all. Um, please use the Q&A chat functionality to ask your questions. We will be monitoring these questions and may use them throughout the presentation or save them towards the end. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available within 24 hours, so keep an eye on your email. We have a lot to cover in this webinar. Uh, we will begin with introductions shortly and then discuss the why and how of the customer portal. Our session will end with revealing what we have built and reflecting on lessons learned because even the most experienced developers will always have changes they want to make. So for those who may not know, I am Cassie. Uh, throughout this project, I took on the role as the stakeholder. This portal has been a dream of mine for quite some time as someone who always wants to move the customer experience forward. And what better tool to use than our own? Next, we had our customer support lead, Casey, with the role as the end user. As someone who manages tickets on a daily basis, he brought a lot of insights into how a user would want to interact with a ticket while providing information that can quickly move their ticket to a resolution. Uh, then we have Jen, our training manager, also wore the hat as a project manager. Hey, everybody. Uh, Micah, who has been doing a brilliant job updating and writing our documentation for the past couple of years, was the person behind the scenes developing our forms. Hi, everyone. Uh, we brought in Vivian to lead user design uh, for and uh, lead junior user journey exercises and design the entire experience. Hello. And then to make the whole front end come to life from those designs, we use the expertise of our intern turn recent employee, Alexa. Hi. <laughs> Then to offer support and give wisdom from her previous experience building a portal, we have Erin. Um, she is 
a little ill, um, but she was just so excited about this project that she still managed to come on board. Thank you so much, Erin. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. However, having a gorgeous experience is useless if the data is not sound. Travis helped test our integrations and ensure the right data was in the right places. Hi. All right. So you may be asking yourself, why a customer portal? What are the benefits? Well, maybe some of these points will resonate with you. Your organization has multiple different tools that store some type of data, project management tool, an HR tool, a CRM, and worst of all, email, making it difficult to keep everything in sync. Your end users have to navigate between different solutions just to accomplish their work. Data is often duplicated across systems, leading to inconsistencies and potential errors. There is lack of insights, status updates, and transparency between teams and end users, which results in more manual check-ins and scattered communication. But here's the key. A well-designed customer service portal can solve these challenges and transform the way you interact with your customers and team. In fact, Forrester Research found that companies offering a robust customer self-service portal have a 25% reduction in support costs and a 70% increase in customer satisfaction. Similarly, Gardner reported that 88% of customers expect a self-service portal and companies that offer them have a 45 higher uh, percent higher retention rate. These metrics clearly show that a customer service portal isn't just a nice to have, but in this day and age, it's essential to providing excellent support and enables teams to be more efficient and responsive. In fact, this is one of our number one use cases for the Kinetic platform with our customers. But like the cobbler whose kids never had shoes because he was so busy ensuring everyone else did, we found ourselves in that same situation with our own service portal. And we knew to continue providing world-class service and support, we had to rectify that as soon as possible. Just like we encourage all our customers, we have a big vision for this portal, since we know the possibilities with the Kinetic platform are nearly limitless. However, for this portion, the goal of the solution is to provide a centralized location for end users to track and submit requests. We will integrate with multiple internal tools to help standardize data and consolidate it into one single source of truth. This will make it easier for customers to own and update their information. All right, so before we get into the panel discussion, here's what we hope you will get out of today's session. Our main focus will be how we narrowed a very large idea into a solution that would provide a great foundation for future growth, but provide immediate value in a short amount of time. We will be breaking down our approach with a customer first mindset and the absolute joy we had building our very own solution with our amazing technology. So without further ado, I will be passing the microphone over to Jen, who will start the first portion of the panel discussion. Before we hopped into the code, we actually had to lay a proper foundation and gather requirements. So the question is going to be for the group, but we're going to start with our stakeholder, Kathy. Can you walk us through the initial steps of the design process? How'd you approach gathering and interpreting the requirements? So honestly, I have been collecting requirements and dreams for this project for a long time. I think it definitely helps to dream big and lay down all the possibilities for a solution like this one. I knew I wanted a central location for our customers to be able to submit and track tickets, RFEs, update their information, as well as being able to provide news and announcements that were not always tied to emails or social media. Once we had a vision in place, it was then about thinking about what could be accomplished in a certain time frame, while of course balancing everyone's other responsibilities. Once we had a vision in mind, we needed to ensure that what we built would be intuitive and make sense to anyone who would interact with the solution. Vivian can talk a little bit more about how she gathered and interpreted our vision. Yeah, uh, thanks, Kathy. Uh, we identified the key individ individuals involved in the process, pretty much the stakeholders. 
uh, gather their feedback and establish a ticketing process and user journey to understand how the ticket interacts with with the with the users or in the system. Uh, using this information, we gathered the requirements and created an, and the initial wireframes and design exploration, having in mind our branding, of course. And the last steps were uh, the high fidelity mockups along with the prototype. Um, this process was iterative since we presented some roadblocks along the way while developing. Um, this process helped us to determine our MVP to ensure the success to our project. So once we had the mapping laid out, how'd you prioritize which features and functionalities for the portal as a stakeholder? Kathy? Uh, yes. So first, we have ourselves a deadline. If you do not have a deadline, you will never truly finish anything. Uh, this helped us to really narrow down what a minimal viable product would look like while still providing benefits to our users right away. We focused on these benefits. Transparency for end users on ticket state, be able to store uh, ticket information or review previous answers and validate customer information. This meant we needed to focus on integrating with our CRM and support tool. This would allow users to submit, update and track their support tickets. This would provide a great entry point since it is a concept our end users are already familiar with. So the solution evolves. It is only going to increase the value uh, the portal provides. Well, getting information out of email is always a value add. If you ask me, email is not my favorite. Um, so once you were able to get all to focus on all the parts you want to develop, what role would you say that the user journeys played in shaping the design? And let's start with Erin, who originally worked on the portal way back when she first started with Kinetic Data as an exercise to get to learn the platform. Yeah, so by having the user journey mapped out, we know exactly where to start and we have a roadmap to exactly where we're going. So it really helps to see things from the end user's perspective, especially because as a developer, it's difficult to know what the end user wants and more importantly needs. Not to mention, it's hard not to color what we work on um, with our own eye or lack thereof for like design and functionality. Having somebody outside the process walk through the journey is super beneficial. Um, I think Casey had a few things to say about that as well. Uh, yeah, actually, um, the journey was pretty eye opening to walk through from start to finish. Usually I kind of see tickets as like a conversation of different emails. So it was nice to walk through from like A to Z, the process a ticket went through and then decide like, could we automate this or improve this? So it was it was really nice. Well, it's a wonderful uh, start to crafting our very own portal for our customers. So now it was time to take the requirements and the vision and start translating that into a design. And so we're super grateful to have our talented designer on our team uh, for the next couple of questions. So Vivian, um, when working on the user centric design, what were some key factors to consider to ensure that seamless and intuitive user experience? Yeah, as you mentioned it, uh, we did the user centric design process. So uh, our team uh, involved the user in every step of the process. Uh, we understand their frustrations and motivations, and we and then we kind of like design how to alleviate those frustrations and how to enhance those motivations for our users. I'm going to go ahead and say you did an amazing job uh, making the portal easy to navigate. I can't wait for everybody to see it later. Um, on that note, can you share some of the most significant design decisions that were made to enhance that user experience while maintaining brand consistency? Yeah, so for this project, we add dark mode. So right now, that's the default setting for the portal, but the goal will be to have the users toggle between light and dark mode in the future. Uh, this has been a request from a lot of users, and we want to start incorporating that, that into our brand. Uh, we also added some, some more illustrations that fit the vibe uh, of our kinetic brand. Um, this new dark UI has accessibility double uh, A, uh, so that means uh, we uh, 
we get to other like users that have different visual impairments and we hope to continue improving on as we build out the portal after this first, first release. I feel like I can speak on behalf of all of us. It looks super cool. Um, absolutely love the dark mode. All right, so um, thought somebody was going to say something here. No? OK, so then our next question is going to be directed to our front end developers, Alexa and Aaron. Uh, I'm going to start with Alexa. Um, you came to Connecticut as an intern this summer, at the beginning of the summer, and we were so grateful to have you be available to work on the project. Can you share how your experience in building the portal with React tools to match Vivian's design? Yeah, of course. So coming from a boot camp, this was a really great experience to see how easy it was to take Spencer's Kinetic React starter base and turn it into a fully functional customer portal. I was able to reuse a lot of Spencer's components and modals with minimal changes to accomplish Vivian's UI for our customer portal. That was really fun to watch you take Vivian's designs and bring them to life um, and create such a cohesive experience for our users. Uh, now, Aaron was involved the first time around, but you didn't have a designer to help provide the blueprint. So how did this process differ for you this go around? Yeah, um, so as a developer, I feel it's safe to say that we don't always have a great eye for design. Um, I like to use Legos as an example. Developers tend to be really good at putting the blocks together. I mean, after all, that's what we get paid to do, but it may not always look the best. So if you ask me to build you a Lego house with a laundry list of interior features, you might end up with a box with a roof. The functionality is in there inside the box, but <clears throat> it's not always beautiful to look at. So having a designer who can provide you um, or the whole development team with that UI UX design is like having that instruction booklet that comes with those really gorgeous Lego sets. So no matter how complex the interior features might get, you get to have a lot more fun by building a super beautiful result. Awesome. So now we have all the plans laid out. Uh, our stakeholder, Cassie, was able to take more of a step back. So she's going to ask the questions now as we move more into the project management portion of the webinar. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, yeah, I have to say it is truly magical to watch a plan take physical shape, but a solution like this one would not be possible without the proper integrations and data to make automation possible for our end users and support team. One of the items that needs to be considered before developing is looking into the systems you will be integrating with, because it is likely you will discover some shortcomings when working with third party systems. As the one with the most experience with our CRM, we are going to start with Casey. What considerations had to be made uh, when it came to data storage and data gathering for this project? Casey? We hadn't really worked. information. Oh. Uh, well, we may have lost Casey there. I'm so sorry. Um, there was um, definitely a lot to consider. I think I can kind of fill in some of the roles here. Um, this really came down to uh, thinking about historical data. Um, so we're integrating with a CRM that has been used for quite some time. So there was a lot of information on. Um, and what we want to really present and how we would want to use that information moving forward. So we really had to consider how the data was currently set up um, and how that would integrate with our systems. Um, so there was definitely a lot to consider uh, with dealing with these external systems. Another person that was able to provide some great insight with his previous experience was Travis. Yeah, uh, kind of as you mentioned, a key requirement when you're integrating with third party systems 
is understanding the limitations of it and your approach to accessing and manipulating that data. So our platform is near limitless, as, as we all know. And you're really going to run into limitations when you need to access data from somewhere else and bring it in. I think that was a, a really key part of the project is understanding how to do that uh, and the best, most optimal way to do it. This was an MVP. Uh, we have plenty of plans to add things to the future. We needed to focus on the basics first, but still leave the framework to enhance upon that there. Um, yeah, it's definitely really important to think about how those systems will work together, um, especially as you're building out the entire workflow. I really appreciate your research and troubleshooting on this. So with that in mind, when working with external systems, did you encounter any design challenges or roadblocks? How did you overcome them? And you're muted, Aaron. We'll forgive you. Thank you. So the requirements for authenticating to the CRM's API endpoints changed over time. And so we had to make sure that our integration stayed up to date with the CRM's requirements. Um, and another thing to remember, kind of talking back to what Travis was saying, is when you're working with that third-party system, that's where you're going to have constraints. Um, and so there's some challenges that we had to work around. For example, the CRM tool that we integrated with, um, it has restrictions around fetching and displaying attachments. So we had to adjust our system to find an approach that we ultimately were satisfied with. Yeah. Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, I think, Travis, you also had some insight. Yeah, the documentation is a really important thing. So that's the vendor's documentation on their APIs. You need to make sure that you can find them, first off, that hopefully they're up to date and you are referencing the right versions. We did have instances where we had documentation on previous versions that wouldn't get us the data we wanted. So we had to make sure we went through, found the up-to-date documentation, and hoped it was sufficient for us. It was definitely a frustration point. Yeah, so playing with third party systems is always such an adventure. Um, we're checking in with our system expert now. Casey, are you back? I'm back. Yeah, sorry. That was uh, <laughs> unfortunate. Um, yeah, one thing we did have trouble with was uh, authentication. We had to have uh, all our permissions set up and we had to do a lot of back and forth testing and running with the API. Um, I was really hoping for integrator to be installed at this point so we could use that to test it out, but um, <laughs> we got it done. It was nice. Yeah. I think I can say uh, integrator will be a great uh, value add to our already powerful platform. I cannot wait for all the fun we will have once it is live and the other integrations we'll be adding to the portal. Uh, once it is available. Um, so now that we had a plan in place and a better understanding of these systems, it was time to start building in the platform. So one of the things I loved that uh, for this project is we got to include people that normally do not get to be as hands on with the product and get their feedback. So starting with Micah, how would you describe your experience building in the platform? Well, before this project, I was really only using the platform for simple things like uh, taking screenshots for supporting documentation. And in this project, it was a whole concept. So I was getting to look at kind of the larger picture of what our platform is capable of and get something closer to a real builder experience. So I was really happy to get that experience under my belt and to be able to take away that perspective for future documentation updates. Yeah. Uh, it was so cool that you got to come from your technical documentation background and apply all that knowledge into building something on your own. Um, also, to everyone here attending, uh, if you have not explored our updated doc sites, I do recommend to all our listeners to give it a tour. Another person who got to dig in with building in our platform was Casey. Normally, he is the one who gets to dig into other people's solutions, but this was a new experience for him to develop from scratch. Can you talk about your experience, Casey? Yeah, um, usually it's like my job to look at gigantic broken workflows and have people explain what's wrong and what's broken. But um, after we went through the user journeys, it kind of mapped out what I had to do from scratch. So it was easy for me to go into a workflow kind of mimic the journey, you know, and then after that. 
framework up. It was really easy. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I have to say it was absolutely wonderful to see two people from such different backgrounds be able to jump right in and immediately start building a solution in the platform. There was a lot of highlights in this project. I know Jen in particular has a highlight she wants to share. Yeah, when we were thinking about, <clears throat> excuse me, highlights of the project, uh, I immediately came to mind when we were working on uh, workflows and integrations. Uh, our CRM, little background, has many associations that it needs to take a support ticket and associate it with the person and the notes and the company and the attachments and all of the things. And it was a complicated workflow to make all of that happen accurately and watching Aaron mastermind that workflow was incredible. Um, it was a fun experience as multiple of us were watching this workflow come to life and hearing her get excited as we like realized what things we were going to have to repeat and clone and loop. And it was, it was great. And it was definitely showing how kinetic data can tackle such a challenge, especially when you have a talented developer. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, this platform really enables developers to quickly problem solve and adjust to different scenarios uh, we may experience with integrating with third party systems that may need things done a certain way. Um, how about you, Casey? Um, I kind of like towards the end when we had uh, kind of the backbone going, but we were making like graphical design tweaks and having Alexa or Vivian change this or Vivian had like different color palettes for state of tickets done that we like voted on. I thought that was cool. Yeah. And now the fun thing is, as we get feedback from users, we can immediately hop in and keep making those adjustments. Um, what was your favorite part, Micah, going from documentation to actually working with the tool? Uh, like Jen mentioned, I was just blown away by all of the workflow behavior that Aaron had to sort out to make the, uh, the pieces of the puzzle fit together. That's something that with a lot of time and a lot of trial and error, I like to think that without my experience, I could manage on my own, but seeing what's possible when you have a developer with experience and ability. It's like, wow, this platform is so much more powerful than I realized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Having an experienced developer definitely helps. And the great thing is work that had been done in the past could easily be repurposed for this iteration of the project. Uh, the magic of kinetic data and the fact that we use technology that is easily accessible makes it so we are not constantly having to overhaul when we make updates and changes. It was very easy to pick up where Aaron left off, which I believe also speaks about the power and flexibility behind our platform. Once we had the integration piece in place, we were able to essentially just plug and play with workflow that had already been developed years ago. So now that we ha you have all heard about the process, it is now time for a big reveal. All right, so remember, uh, we had to focus on one particular use case that would provide immediate benefits to our users. So in this case, we wanted our end users to be able to track the progress of a ticket and always have the history to look back on. Um, so on the front page, you will see, you'll be able to see a list of submitted tickets from most recent, um, as well as, you know, some quick links to like our blog, our documentation, and our training. So to demo this, we are going to start by submitting a ticket. So you'll click on the new ticket. Um, it's set up kind of similar as if you were going to write in an email. So you have the subject line. Um, I can't type. Um, I need a third monitor to handle multitasking during webinars. Yeah, my support team is very good at this stuff. So this is an other, um, but you can see we have like if it was with the form you had questions, maybe a workflow issue, um, something with integration or security, then you'll have the choice of environment. So you can say whether or not this is affecting all environments, non-production or production. Um, Hold on just a moment here, making sure everyone can see my screen. 
Um, okay. And then from there, I'm going to just say it's a non-production issue. It would be really helpful. Um, okay. I support team. Would be super nice if we could get this done. Um, then you can have an upload file. So you can have attachments. Um, I don't have attachments at this time. I could, I guess, track something down, but I'll make it a little easier for our support team. All right. So our ticket has now been submitted. Um, and if we want, I'm going to do a quick refresh here. Please remember this is our MVP. Things will become more intuitive and the system will do a little bit more for you. Um, but we wanted to get this up and running as soon as possible. So we see now we have a ticket and our ticket number, um, which we found would be very useful if you wanted to track something or you needed to report on an issue um, to the people at your company. Um, so you'll now have the ability to do that. If you click on it, um, you'll get more information here. Um, hopefully while I am walking you through all of this, our support team maybe will even get around to answering. So you can actually see that in real time. We also have these beautiful illustrations that Vivian mentioned earlier to kind of fit the vibe. Um, you'll have the ability to like submit and add notes. Um, we'll just say I'm really impatient. And we'll submit that note here. And if we refresh, We'll just say it shows up. Um, if we had sent this email, so instead of coming to the portal, um, but had emailed instead to support at kineticdata.com, you could still log into your portal to see a submission. So you can still always track it, um, even if it doesn't originate here in the portal. The other thing we wanted to do um, is make it so it's easy for you. Um, to look at your information. So right now, um, none of this is editable. The goal is eventually for customers to kind of take on um, more of that role and be able to update information because the more accurate the information we have, the more quickly we can solve your problems. Um, this way you kind of avoid that little back and forth of like, oh, what are you running here? What are you running there? Um, that could, you know, cause some hangups and change how things are interacting. Um, the other thing that we will be adding, um, so here you'll have the selection of like customer portal, um, but we also will be making this more robust. So we'll have like webinar registration. Um, so as you can see, today's webinar um, for crafting a customer portal. Um, so people are able to sign up directly from here as we have more of these events. Um, all right, so let's go back here to our front page. And let's see if we have gotten any information. Perfect. So support um, has approved the purchase and I get ultra wide monitor. I am super excited. That will be very, very beneficial. So easy as that. Um, we are super excited to start rolling this out to all our customers with the goal of making this the primary location for all our end users to submit requests and get information. Uh, so if you have any questions for our team here, um, please remember to use the Q&A or chat functionality. Um, we will be turning things over here shortly after this one last little reflection part of our project. Like with any project, it is always important to take time to reflect on the good and the bad. So we are always improving our process and product. I would like to take some time to get insight from our kinetic builders and hopefully their findings may help you with any of your own projects. I'm going to start with Micah. Is there anything you would have done differently during this phase of the project? Uh, for sure. Looking into the integrations first before I got started with development definitely would have saved me some time or at least altered the direction in which I took things. Yeah, I think uh, the cement was built across the board. Um, I believe you had a similar take, Casey. Uh, yeah, um, reviewing the API documentation and knowing how you're going to integrate and knowing what calls and how 
other CRMs use their data beforehand would have would have saved us a lot of time. Another another plug for Integrator would have would have helped. <laughs> We talked about it earlier in the webinar, but it was definitely uh, felt it was worth repeating. Uh, doing your research on systems you will need to integrate with will help in assuring you have access to the right data and you understand the format you will need to interact with that data appropriately. Uh, we are able to do a lot of manipulation from the Kinetic platform, but it would have saved some time. Starting with Micah, what other key takeaways can be applied to future design projects? Uh, Definitely keeping the focus on the MVP instead of getting distracted by what you think sounds cool right now. Um, I know when you're working with a bunch of perfectionists, and I include myself in that, you always want to have the perfect iteration, but it doesn't always work like that. Instead, focus on getting the things that you wanted out in the field and then iterating to excellence instead. Could I have said it better myself? Um, from a design perspective, any key takeaways from you, Vivian? Yes, um, having the deadline, understanding the right resources, people, and systems really help us to uh, really help to keep us focused on the right priorities. Definitely, we are able to accomplish so much in such a short amount of time. Last but not least, how did the final product compare to the original vision? Did it evolve in ways you didn't expect? I'm actually going to go first here as the stakeholder. Um, for our first MVP, I was definitely blown away by what this team put together in a matter of weeks. And this was all work they fit around their other priorities. It was truly incredible how the front end came together so quickly. One morning, we had some forms and workflow, and then by the afternoon, it had a whole new look and appearance. Truly incredible to see it all come together. I think Micah had similar thoughts. Yeah, because all of the work that I was doing was on the back end, being able to come in and see all of the pieces put together. It was, oh, it's more than just it does what it's supposed to do. It's really pretty. <laughs> yes. Um, so before we hop into maybe some more Q&A, uh, is there anything else the team wants to add before I hand this over to Jen? Go ahead, Aaron. Um, yeah, I think it's really awesome that we had sort of eight team members from, you know, cross um, functionality. You know, we had people in support, documentation, we had developers, workflow folks, um, customer success, and we all came together and and built this. And I think it's I think it's just really awesome to get that many people from that many different expertise working together on one solution. Anyone and else? I'd like, yeah, I'd like to add, um, like I said before, coming from a boot camp, I loved being able to apply my knowledge and contribute to the team. Together, we created a customer portal that was truly remarkable and something I will personally always be proud of as my first project. Seriously, us too. We were so thankful to have you join us, Alexa. Um, and it was really, really great that someone so new could do so much in such a short amount of time. All right, I think I'll be kicking this over now to Jen. I'm so excited because uh, the question that has popped up, so there's only one there so far. It's not too late to go ahead and put your questions in, um, but I love this question because I know the answer, but I'm going to let you answer it. Uh, will we eventually tie this into requests for enhancements? A hundred percent. That should be coming along with kind of our next iteration. Uh, this was also a number one priority for us. Um, right now, um, RFEs do get sent to an email and we do fully appreciate it and we do track it, um, but there is a kind of a lack of transparency for our customers um, and we really want to make it so our customers can see when they submitted an RFE, maybe get some response to it, and then we quickly see when that might have been available and then what release. So um, we're really excited to start tying that into our customer portal. Are there any other questions from our listeners? Um, if there's something maybe more technical you want to ask, we do have our professionals all waiting here to answer your questions. 
And if not, and you just want to say it's absolutely amazing and you can't wait to hop in, we'll accept that as well. Uh, what other features do we have planned for the future? Will we have a roadmap? 100%. Thank you so much for asking this question. Um, we do have quite a few features planned. Um, we're going to also make it so people can request um, like licensing. So if you need a new license, you can request that information. If you want any additional resources, maybe for an upcoming project, this will be a way to submit some of that information. Um, if you need a security questionnaire or something answered that way or want to report maybe an incident, we'll have that available as well. Um, we're looking at tying um, some other systems together like our training uh, and maybe like documentation uh, and how you might want to um, maybe submit some feedback and you would be able to also track that as well. So not just like a support request, um, but something else uh, that we would like to track here internally and you'd like to see when that became a, made available. So we will be actually meeting um, in October to kind of talk about these next phases for the project. What other questions do we have? If the, that's all, that's totally fine. Start with you. All right. Well, again, you can always, you know where to find us. You can always send us an email or anything like that. Um, I would like to uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, we're really excited to be rolling out this portal to all our customers. Um, it is always going to be evolving. Um, the Kinetic platform is a powerful system that really makes anything possible. Um, and that that's why it was so important for us to focus on hitting deadlines and delivering immediate value to our users. Um, it's easy to get sidetracked by all the extra features we could add, but staying focused on what matters most was key. We're excited to keep improving and providing more resources because customer experience is our top priority. If you'd like to chat more about maybe how to apply these design principles to your own projects, don't hesitate to reach out to your customer success manager. We're here to help set your team up for success. Uh, with that being said, we do have upcoming events to con continue supporting our users. Take it away, Jen. So as you can see here, we have um, a couple of events already scheduled. Um, October 29th, we'll be hosting our first ever, Cassie, uh, mm -hmm. virtual training event. So we're already stacking up um, sessions for that uh, event, and you'll see that in an email here coming your way soon. So keep an, an eye on your inbox. Uh, in early December, we're going to host another webinar called Thinking Kinetically, Translating Your Business Code or Business Process into Code. Um, we're also going to be sending some information out about that one. So keep again, keep your eye on your inbox. Um, and then finally, we're already planning into 2025. Uh, the first quarter, we'll be hosting beautifying your process, developing your, with your user experience in mind. And as you can see, we just recently had experience doing that on our very own portal. So we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Yes. Thank you all so much for attending. Uh, if you do have any feedback or suggestions for future events you would like to see, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and thank you all so much. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.